Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise, and welcome back to another From the Depth subscriber craft review. And this is one I've been looking forward to a long time, I've been quite regretful that I haven't been getting around to it sooner. This is The Underdog by the Geodarian, and I've particularly been looking forward to this one because I... Well, I, it's not like I helped design it, because I didn't. I was giving feedback on this ship while he was building it, and I came up with the name for it, because the way this thing, I don't know, just the way it looks, its silhouette, and the way it kind of behaves in combat, and the way it's quite small and compact, it reminds me a lot of a te of like a, a small dog with game, uh, like a terrier, like something, something like a, a Scottish terrier, or a pit bull, or something like that. But anyway, so, there's not actually a tremendous amount of s much to say about this ship. Like, I like it. It's not the best, it's not the best design I've ever seen, but then again, my designs aren't the best I've ever seen either, so I can't throw stones there. And, well, starting off with, this is honestly one of my favorite kinds of ships. It's a wooden cram vessel. Like, the Geodarian likes making things like that, and so do I. As anyone who's watched my campaign series can probably tell. I just, I like making ships out of wood, and I like cram cannons. And this is just such a ship, so... Already it's got points there. It looks quite pretty, it looks good in my fleet colors, it just looks like a... Great big orange thing. It's got a little smoke here. It's got lots of guns, it's got six main guns. Uh... It's got three, three of the three ones in the front are just single barrel cram turrets. It's got a double one in the back. It's got, I think, what is this one? This is, oops, he didn't set the accuracy on this one. Naughty! Really should have seen that sooner. So, this is, yeah, this is a heat, this is a heat gun up here, which is interesting. And this is a time fuse skimmer tip. So, I guess that's the anti-air gun, of sorts. So, what can you say about this game? What game? Pfft, I'm, like, I'm still thinking of, like, uh, the why you should play I did the... I did just the other day, so... Yeah, no, think, think, concentrate, ship. And my eyes are cheap. That's not helping. Ah! Why is everything going wrong? Ugh! Okay. So, what can you say about the ship? Well, it's armed with crams, and these crams are actually pretty well designed. Pretty well designed. It's decent Tetris. It's not. It's not a Wellner levels of Tetris. I have to say, it's actually rather similar to what I used to have on the Skiller before a Wellner had a bit of an update on it. It's interesting to say the least. It's kind of this. Uh, what do you call? What, dude? Like, I'd love to know why this is a thing. You don't put your ammo right next to your weapons. That's just not clever. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Presumably this is to make it aim for the superstructure, but that, I would, this is not smart. I do not think this is a smart idea at all. But in any case, so we're looking at the cram, so... Standard 4x4 Treacherous. Only two connections on these explosive ones here. Lots of frag in them. I believe this is a timed fused cram. In fact, I think almost all of them are. Is that? No, that's a laser targeter. That's a fusing box. Yeah, time for fu launch and inertial. Is this one the same? Are you going to be an absolute darling and put your fuse in the same place? No, you're not. That's the auto loader. Where is the thing? Eh. I'm deliberately my... Screw it. Screw it! Let's see here. Where's the old fusing box, sir? I want to see what this cram is. Incidentally, I really should, like, check these things ahead of time. But, uh, there's something quite just fun about digging around in the guts of some... There it is. Hello. This is time for launch inertial. Roger, roger. What's your vector, Victor? And this one down here... Similar story, I'm guessing. Yep, it's high explosive and frag. And that's not where it is. Almost all of these are built differently. Interesting. It's got a shield generator in there. 
uh, firing restrictions on the firing piece and on the turret. That's I don't know if that's overkill. It probably isn't, knowing how likely ships in this game are going to shoot themselves. Where's the fuse? Four percent of the shells taken by fuses. Yeah, this should thing. This thing should have a fuse somewhere. Where's your fuse? I want to push your buttons and make you sad. Oh, there it is. And same thing. Time for launch inertial. Last cram cannon. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Are you gonna be a darling and have your fuses in the same place? Ah, yeah. Well done. This is a good. This is a good trick. You these corner pieces, as I've, I think I've mentioned before, when I. Uh, did a most wanted on the bulwark. These things only connect to other gauge increases on uh, four sides out of six. So if you have the other two sides facing other gauge increases, they don't connect, which means you can build ma much more compactly with these double turrets. And here's one fuse in time for launch inertial. Good, good. Where's the other one? Like I know the fuse is set up like that. I just it's always nice to see. Yep. Good, good. So. In other words, we've got uh, uh, five big cram cannons. I didn't check the size of these things. So that's 1445, 1445, 1616, uh, 2000 millimeters, just on this one, and 1645. So it really big guns to have on such a small craft. Really big guns indeed, and very compact. It's very nice. It's got it's got little missiles here. These aren't amazing, but they do the trick. Little supplemental damage. I believe it has. What is down here? That is torpedoes. Not entirely sure. This thing isn't on a turret, so yeah. So it's got passive sonar. I seem to recall. I was Jodarian was talking to me about. Uh, putting like counter torpedoes on this, like the same kind which I kind of use. I think he got rid of them, so presumably they weren't working out too well. Where are you at? That's interesting. Let's have a look at this thing's guts again. Right, so, interesting design here. So, yeah, what is the pros of this vehicle? Well, it's got a lot of crams. The ammo is in weird places, and that's uh, the first problem this has is that this thing is tougher than you might expect. It still isn't super tough because it is mostly wood and alloy and there's some metal in some just here where it, like it looks cool but it doesn't actually do that much good and it's got stone on the bottom which is good EMP defense but it's not really the best thing against torpedoes. It relies mostly on layered alloy by the looks of it. Which is okay, alloy, it isn't uh, flimsy, but compared to something like metal or stone, actually it's... Also, I think there's a block missing here. That's a bit of a critical weak point, isn't it? Let's fix that. Here, and here. You gotta... That's the kind of thing that, like, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, you're playing FTD, and you just, you just have a brain fart and it doesn't work. So... Let's see here, light my ally block. That's armor of 13. Wait, 13? Oh, right. I keep thinking of metal having an armor of 10 for some stupid reason. And armor of 7. So, yeah, like. For future reference, like, metal is roughly twice the toughness of stone. In fact, alloy is stronger than stone. I didn't actually... I guess I should have guessed because alloy is a lot more expensive. 1807 versus... Let's see... 15, 16, and 13. So stone is more health, but alloy has more armor. It's actually quite a clever design, really. So yeah, this thing is reasonably tough, but it's not super tough. Like, I get in the montage you would have seen whenever this thing gets hit by a big explosive shell, bits just fly off it. Keeps fighting, though. Gotta give it credit for that. And it's got a lovely PID on the bottom, keeping it upright and stable. Because there's cram cannon parts are heavy, and this thing is very compact. Just it's basically full of cram cannons and the ammo is stuffed wherever. And on that note, the ammo appears to be in weird places. I actually didn't notice this before. So here we have 
these are very vulnerable, like, it'll... I don't know, just a few shots from an APS, or one good shot from a cram, will just tear straight through all this, and just blow that up, blow the end off. And there's more ammo down here, in metal beams, right next to the engines, not a good idea, because... The AI tends to aim for these first, if they've got aim point selection, at least pretty much every faction craft I've seen does this. So, scattering your ammo throughout your ship is only really a good idea if it's in secure little pockets. So, this is probably not the best idea. Where else is it? In here, this is... This is a little bit more sensible, it's just... Well, the single block isn't particularly smart. I would use a... I would use 3x3 three three beams here instead. Do something like this. One, two, see, and now you've got big strong beams there just covering that same hole rather than one one meter block and a few two meters. And like here, for instance. Now nah, that's okay. And here, turret. One, two, uh, one, two, three. Her. One, two, three. That turret is dangerously close to the ammo. Again, like, uh, enemies are going to be shooting here first. Because I've noticed in my testing, this craft isn't very dodgy. Like, it tends to eat a lot of fire, and that's... It's a similar uh, criticism I had of... What's it? I think it was the Lapis Escort class destroyer by Sunday Lau. It's just... The ammo pockets are... I think it was that ship. Or was it the Lancer? I think it was actually both of them, really. The ammo is, like, close in the center of the ship, and it's near other components which you don't want the enemy shooting at. So, I don't know, it can be, it, like, if you're building compact, you kind of don't have much of a choice, but I would stick the ammo well away from other vital components. But that's just me, like, maybe there's something that, I don't know, maybe I've missed here. But I do know that... Well, for right here, for instance, if something else armed with cram guns is, say, firing at this ammo barrel, for instance, it'll... Okay, one, two, three, four, it's got four layers of material to go through, but it's also right next to these guns. And plunging fire and anything that skips off the water is going to tear these up. And in particular, I've noticed that this middle gun right here, this 2,000mm gun, tends to get blown off quite early, and I think it is because there's ammo right here, and the AI just cannot resist aiming for it. So, it's uh, not perhaps as tough as it could be. It does have a bit of metal here. It does use very little power, so I think... Hang on, let's go look at the engine again. I'm hardly a science engine, so supercharger, low to medium RPM. So this engine isn't intended to like run at full tilt. Which is just fine, because it's not running at full tilt right now, and it is barely touching the fuel at all. Is there another one around here? Nope, that's it. That's the only one it has. Possibly the only one it needs. That's going to get less efficient uh, once they the engine starts running a bit more hot. And it has shields, as you would have seen in Montage. It's got beautiful little purple shields. So yeah, what else? And I noticed before... Is this still the case? Is this still the case? Where's you? There's the controller. Here is that. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, that shield control. The torpedoes don't have a uh, maximum altitude to engage. You need to fix that because when I tested this against a moray, it was firing its torpedoes, and that's not a good idea. Torpedoes are expensive in terms of ammo, so you don't really want that. I think that's the, all the torpedoes it has, unless I missed a few. Another sneaky little. Something that's attempting to be an aim point, full point. Another single block here. Less good. So yeah, I think I've, uh, I've done that thing again where I like rattle on everything wrong with the ship and at the end I say, but I like it. I do like this thing. I, this kind of reminds me, it does remind me quite a bit of like my own ships. Just the lot of wood, there's a lot of stone. Certainly more alloy than I ever use. I keep forgetting that alloy can be a pretty good idea. But yeah, it's got big cram guns and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna throw it at something. Let's... Yeah, let's throw it at the Wanderlust. It's fun to do that. See, purple shields. 
tiny little shields on the guns, probably not that helpful. But, yeah, that's the underdog. I'm to swear this thing had counter, tor had counter torpedoes or counter missiles at one point. It still has the munition warners for them. So, I guess they got removed at some point. I guess the Geodarian decided that, uh, that they weren't really worth it. But, you know what? Like, all the more power to you. Like, sometimes offense is the best defense. And this thing certainly does have a lot of it. Like, not a godly class design by any means, but it's solid. It's solid and I like it. So, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I will see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell. Wait. Where are those torpedoes going? Wait a minute. I did my outro too early again. Quick, do these things have one turns? They don't! Ah! Disaster has struck for us. Judarian, fix, please. Farewell.